How's that mic sound now? Is it all right? Yeah, I have a duct tape. We could actually, you know, kind of put a pinch on it and tape it down. Yeah. You want to do that? Yeah, that's fine. I get, it, when you put a little pressure down on it, it mm. yeah, yep, 250F, this is my son's 150 and my other son's little TTR 50. We're all into motocross, man. Yeah, Santa Cruz is just doing an amateur team this year. Yeah, so, oh, here they are, right here. And I called them, you know, I've been dealing with them forever, but but I'll be their only rider that's, you know, I guess a professional, but I'm old. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I got a model from last year with Santa Cruz. I don't know if you ever saw that one. What? What? This year's board. And this is what I did when I um, rode for Santa Cruz, I think in like 90 or 91 or something. I just stickered my board this way. And then they, you know, sublimated and made those graphics. That one right there, I ride it the Donner Vintage one. That was my first snowboard or first model. So the one with the Genie up there is my first one. And I rode that at that Donner Vintage mm -hmm. contest. He tried it now, man. <laughs> I got lucky I, when I was younger, I gave all that shit to my mom, you know? I knew I wouldn't be able to hang out with all your friends and shit, taking everything. Palmer's board. And for the championship, him and Brushy were going against each other. And it was raining on the snow, so I quit riding and started drinking and cheering them on. Because it was so shitty, I mean, you couldn't even get above the pipe. It says, Roach did not win the truck, but I did get drunk. Or I did get mad and we will get drunk. <laughs> In 92. He just destroyed his board, and I'm like, dude, let me have that board. Write me a story on it. You should do Ranquit, too. My biggest influence in snowboarding was him and Noah, for sure, no doubt about it. I mean, those guys were the gnarliest guys, man. We need Noah's rhino to get up there, man. We don't have to walk. <laughs> you know, he's an original Grass Valley guy, and... Though I do live here now, I'm not from this area. So Chris, you know, and Tucker and Monty and all these guys are from Grass Valley. And I always respected that whole little crew because they're all so talented, you know. So I'd see them riding and, uh, you know, ended up meeting them and becoming friends with them, I guess, over the years. Yeah, it's always been a, you know, mutual friendship with your skating or snowboarding and now motocross occasionally together and uh, we stayed friends. And it's pretty cool. He's a really good skateboarder too, and people probably don't know that he's a really good motocross rider too. He's an avid rider, and he's been actually competing and uh, and doing well. So it's it's good to see. He's that uh, motivated and, uh, and is with his family and works hard. He's a good guy. So much respect for him. Right now, I'm in the process of clearing all this shit out. All this, you know what poison oak is? Yeah. Do you guys have that? So you don't want to touch any of that. <laughs> I get it horribly bad. I'm gonna clear all this out, you know, so you can, you know, actually walk around everywhere. Yeah, this would've been cool to be able to film this. This is like, you could've gotten like up there, you know, and the view. This is a triple jump right here. That would've been sick backdrop. Click third gear and then it's about a 60 foot double and then this one's about 82 right here. Step down, triple right here. Yeah, it's fun. It goes all the way around I me. Mean, we can walk it. It goes way up around the woods over there. It's got a six step up and then another table out and then back around. It's about a 45 second long track. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do a lot of amateur stuff. I, I ride the 30 plus intermediate class and then the 250 novice class. And locally, I ride uh, the E Street um, races and then uh, we do uh, Hangtown. We did the MX crossover down there. I did, I got, I think I got fifth in that and the monster class, and then the intermediate class, I got third. Okay. Fuck, that sucks, I wish I could ride it. It'd be so sick looking with you standing up on the ditch and me stepping up to you. There's a rock plant that's just right down the street that I work with all the time. They're gonna sell me some sand, you know, for cheap, so I'll bring a bunch of sand in here and just this will be like a sand track, <laughs> that'd be sick. And then once again, you just land, and this is just a third gear little 
step up right here. I try to mimic Hangtown step up. Yeah, this guy here that you gotta step down, and, just, and then the line is kind of right there. I mean, you can see, you know, it's like the perfect fastest lines on the edge. It's so nice. The tracks are probably about 40, 45 minutes away from me. So having this here, it gives me the exercise whenever I want it, and it's just so nice. Uh, Ryder's two and a half, almost three, and he's real interested in it. And my uh, other son, Talon, he's eight, and he's totally into motocross. And and uh, Jaron's just, he's got the 150, and he loves it too. So they're all into snowboarding and motocross. Um, yeah, they they love skateboarding, but I'm I'm kind of hurt right now, so we haven't been. It's too bad because they should be skating, even though I'm not. But right now they kind of do everything that that I do, so skateboarding's had to take a, a backseat to everything right now. It's unfortunate. That's what hurts the most, and on my leg. So gotta wait to get it fixed in the in early winter, and then probably be back to skateboarding. Skateboarding, I started when I was really young. I just started skateboarding probably when I was five years old or whatnot. And, and if I could get my leg fixed now, I'd still be skateboarding, which I plan on doing. And, I mean, skateboarding will always be in my blood. Skateboarding gave me snowboarding's way I see it. And snowboarding has given me what I have now. So, you know, I, I owe a lot to probably skateboarding and snowboarding. And they give you the same great feelings, you know, when you learn something or you're progressing or whatever. And, well, I grew up in Salinas till I was probably 10 years old, and we were skateboarders down there in Salinas. And then when I moved up here, we met the skateboarders that lived in Grass Valley, and Tucker Franson was one of them. He's the one that got me into snowboarding, and we started going to uh, Donner Ski Ranch with him and his family. We uh, hiked around, I guess, before we went to Donner and the backcountry, and then Donner Ski Ranch was the first resort that opened up to us for snowboarding. And we spent most of our time there, probably for the next five years at Donner. Probably been uh, John Ackright, and Damien Sanders, Tucker, myself, my brother. Yeah, that's probably, I don't know, those are the guys I was riding with. Yeah, Monty and I rode pretty much together the whole time. We had the, you know, he drove before I could even drive, and so we were always riding together, and he had the same passion, did the same thing, so. Chris and Monty, you know, were the quintessential Grass Valley troublemakers. You know, they were cute, they were blonde, uh, they were very California. You know, they were kind of good old boys, so they were always having fun. And, you know, Chris had a, a really respectable style. I mean, to this day, I think he was, you know, he was one of the most stylish snowboarders. He had a very distinct way of writing that a lot of people really responded to. Yeah, Chris Rudd, he's got a talent, he's got a style that was just insane. He, he had a skate style that was so cool and he was, like he would poke out a front side air and just hold it for the longest time like Chris Miller on a skateboard and it was just the coolest looking thing. It's like a, you know, a guy in a motocross whipping it and just holding that whip forever, it was so much style. And uh, everybody else was like, get the trick down, do it real quick, you know. Um, Roach was like the right out of the stoner guy from the surfer, you know, surfer movies. He was like a Spicoli, he was fucking hilarious. Roach's style was all about being like really fucking train. Um, like Roach's style was all about being like super squatty and like really tight and compact. Like, I mean, we were grabbing like way up on our tip and doing methods. Every grab that Roach did was like full skate, like around his feet. You know, everything was proper, and there wasn't like just you know, wherever your hand happens to hit while you're flying through the air. But that's, that's what we were doing back east. Like, but, and those guys were all tight. Everything was super tight. They were, they were kind of like what I'd say is like the next generation. They were like the young dudes when Damien and Sione and Graham were the big guys. And uh, I definitely got into it. Like there's like a shot of Chris Roach doing like a, like a front side grab in the western front that is like so insane. And it's probably only like three feet off the ground. But like he was like, in my mind, the first guy that brought style to snowboarding. So, like in terms of like how you actually rode, I would try to more emulate probably Chris Roach than anybody else. Because he was the coolest looking dude I'd ever seen at that point. <laughs> like I remember first seeing him in the Sims ad, and I snowboarded for Sims then, and just doing this front side, you know, nose like uh, nose bone air, and it was like, dude, that guy's so rad looking, you know. Well, you know, I always just did what felt good to me and. 
And I know when I, I mean, I had posters up of Palmer and Kidwell doing backside airs in, in my room when I was a, a kid. So I felt like I needed to look like that or something close to that. And when I saw me riding or whatever, I always felt, yeah, whatever. But everyone always said that I had good style or whatnot. And, and now I, I really appreciate it more than I did then, I guess. You know what always used to trip me out? This is so funny, man, but I used to go, I used to look at Chris Roach and go, that looks, looks like Palmer, that's Palmer. I'd be like, I, I thought it was Palmer. I'd go, what, Palmer's riding Goofy? That's not Palmer. Palmer doesn't ride Goofy. I used to think Chris Roach was Sean Palmer. You know, I did. And, uh, but then I'd realize he's Goofy, man. Just in videos when I first started seeing him, and then, I don't know. I mean, I'm just equating the style, but yeah, I know people that don't, you know, I talk to people that don't know who Chris Roach is. I'm like, really? You know, fuck, come on. I'm always impressed when a, a, a snowboarder today knows who Damien Sanders is or Chris Roach, Kidwell. You got to know where, where it came from, you know, and, and I, I, I've always give props to the kids that have done their homework and seen the old videos or whatever. I mean, a lot of guys are like, who's Damien? Who's Chris Roach? It's like, are you kidding me? Who's Chris Roach? And, and especially if you're, hey, if, if, if you're not a pro, that's cool. But if you're a pro snowboarder, you better know who Chris Roach is, in my opinion. So, Mr. Roach, how do you feel about the California Snowboard Series? I'll do it again. Be fully. GS is rad. They set up good GS courses. It was structured. And uh, pipes and stuff. Dude, I don't know. That's, that doesn't last it. Well, yeah, fully. Yeah. Because I won that. Yeah. What about the California State Snowboard Series, and uh, that was just kind of the lo for the local mountains. We didn't. We went up to Shasta and and just all the local mountains around here. And I think uh, I won that series, but but we had to we raised gates at that point too, you know, and and half pipe gates, moguls. It didn't matter. We did everything at that point. We went to Breckenridge, and, and that was the World Cup, and I broke, I broke my Sims board that I'd bought in, in, uh, in the pipe, and Tom Sims actually watched me break it, and I think that was my biggest break, is from Tom watching me snap that board, because he, he might have been watching me earlier in the day, and then he invited me to his, uh, to his hotel room, and he had probably like 100 boards in there, and said, you pick one, and... And if you do well, well, we'll try to see what we can do from here. And that was probably the best thing I ever could have done is break that board. Well, the, the, the whole NorCal scene uh, had a lot of players like Tucker Franson and Chris Roach and Noah Selaznick. These guys all sort of had kind of the, the Sims soul uh, in those days because, you know, they had their skateboard background and they were low key and they performed uh, incredibly. And that was sort of the whole image of what a Sims rider was, not, it was just almost by default, because the, these guys, you know, I, I, I don't remember the exact time that each one of them ended up on the team, but it was almost like, sure, of course you're on the team. Oh, for me, it was a dream come true, because I, I was a skateboarder and, you know, all, I got all the skateboards and all that. and then. Sims was such a big company for me because I was a kid, you know, and it was Sims, you, you know, it was like skating, snowboarding, and knowing who Tom was, and Terry Kidwell rode for him, and Sean Palmer, and, and those guys were my heroes of, of snowboarding then as well, so it was rad to be on the same team as them. And Sims was paying me 700 bucks a month, and I was like, that's a career, man, that's killer, you know, when you're that young, and then by the time I switched to Santa Cruz, I got on with Santa Cruz and they were paying me good money and then Quicksilver and got with Dragon and, and Vans and I just felt like at that point that I could probably make a living off it, you know? So I don't know what, how, what year it was or whatever, but I knew I couldn't work, man, and I had to do that because I didn't know what the hell else I was going to do. <laughs> didn't do good in school, wasn't that smart. <laughs>